Yo ho ho, Don Mafia. Welcome to yet another edition of the Don Mafia Report, your only source for juicy, succulent Bill's content. And so now that I burned that terrible image in your brain for the foreseeable future, might as well just jump right in to business. Don Mafia, you read the title of that video correctly. We are going to be looking at three names that might surprisingly be cut from the Buffalo Bills by the time the Saturday deadline approaches. I came across an article from the Democrat and Chronicle uh, by Sal, and we all know Sal, huge Buffalo Bills personality, and we're going to look through the three names that he mentioned and see whether or not that that makes sense whatsoever, and I'm going to give an argument for the reason I think they might get cut and then a reason why I don't think they might get cut, so might be an interesting little view. So yeah, Dumb Mafia, right before we even dive into that though, I figured I might as well give you uh, some key storylines that have been circulating around the Buffalo Bills community. Number one, Sean McDermott announced today that Josh Norman was limited in practice. Thank the Lord. Let's be honest with ourselves. He is set to be our CB2. As much as I love Levi Wallace, I was really looking forward to see what Josh Norman was going to bring to the table especially once we go up against the New Jersey Jets on week one. Ladies and gentlemen, let's be honest with ourselves. I saw a tweet the other day saying that the Bills and the Jets week one matchup where it stands now is going to be like a money college game where the University of Alabama is facing like the University of Phoenix online. It's about to be an absolute slaughter, and I really wanted to see Josh Norman perform. So it's fantastic news that Josh Norman is taking that next step, and let's just all cross our fingers that he's going to be able to make uh, that next step and be ready to play until so once we end up playing the New Jersey Jets. Number two, there's a rumor that I need to address, and I'm going to be a Debbie Downer. Ladies and gentlemen, news broke around the Bills community today that the Bills called and inquired about Leonard Fournette, recently released running back from the Jacksonville Jaguars. And let me just say this, stop that shit right now. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, Brandon Bean, being the very productive man he is, he legitimately calls on every single relevant free agent that ever hits the market. I mean, honestly, just go through Google archives of any like free agent worth naming and tell me a name where you haven't seen an article saying that Brandon Bean inquired about them. He's just doing his job. Right now, we are completely set at running back with Devin Singletary and Zach Moss. Don't get me wrong. It would be cool to have Leonard Fournette, I guess, and have just three badass running backs. I mean, y'all know that I'm a run the damn ball kind of mother but I mean, it just really doesn't make sense. Don't get your hopes up. Let's put it this way. I will put my life savings down on a bet that the Bills do not end up picking Leonard Fournette. Now that I ended up raining on your parade, let's go on ahead and <laughs> dive in to the main reason that you clicked into this video today. So yeah, like I was saying, I ended up finding an article from the Democrat and Chronicle by our good old friend Sal, and he ended up listing three names of Buffalo Bills that might actually get cut. And the first name is wide receiver kick returner Andre Roberts. Now, out of all the names on this list, I'm going to have to say that this is the least likely of a person who will be cut from this team. You've heard me talk about this a million times, that Andre Roberts is the best kick returner in the NFL, and I honestly think that really letting him loose would be a disservice. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a couple of wide receivers I suppose could take his place, or maybe even some other position groups, but letting him walk, in my opinion, would be dumb as fuck frankly. Say, for example, that they do go that route and placing an argument with Sal saying that there is a possibility he could be cut. Um, that's going to give a, let's say, a receiver who's fighting for a spot on this limited room before we make the cut on the 53. Maybe it's Isaiah McKenzie. Um, maybe it's Foster. Doubt it. Realistically, it is so hard to make an argument for the fact that I think he's going to be cut and to find a replacement that would be equally as beneficial. That's the one that I'm really not seeing. And so number two, he mentioned defensive end Trent Murphy. Now y'all know that I'm a huge Trent Murphy fan. I think that he gets a lot of undeserved 
flack from not only Bills media, but from Bills fans as well. But unfortunately, I would say that he's probably the most likely out of the three that were featured on this article to be the surprise cut. And I just have to go with the fact that we are absolutely stacked on the defensive line, specifically when it comes to the defensive end position. I mean, obviously we have Jerry Hughes, we have Mario Addison, and then it seems like that Epinesa has been absolutely destroying camp this year. So, I mean, out of all the names, like I said, Trent Murphy might be the guy that, I don't know, maybe goes away. I mean, maybe we end up releasing him or we find somebody that's willing to trade for him for a nice little draft pick in 2021. I personally would like to keep Trent Murphy just because it's clear that Sean McDermott is going to be rotating the defensive line. We all know that he's trying to create continuity in the offensive line, but at the same time, I think having Trent Murphy along with Mario Addison, Jerry Hughes, and Epinesa would be smart just since it seems like he's really holding in to the fact that he wants to be able to establish that rotational threat. And so then again, Sean McDermott has been praising him all throughout camp. Then again, this could be coach speak like we all know and love. I mean, we heard what he was saying about Steven Hoshka, and then legitimately six hours later, we end up kicking him to the curb. So if there is anybody that was going to be cut from this list, it is going to be Trent Murphy, but I am under the impression that he is going to be on the 53-man roster this year. And then last but not least is going to be Brian Winters. We recently just ended up picking him up from the New York Jets after he was released. And, you know, it was definitely nice because especially with John Feliciano going down with that injury, that position in the offensive line being right guard was essentially a glaring hole. But the reason that I might side with Sal on this one is, is the fact that Sean McDermott has still yet to make a decision on who is going to fill that role. I mean, honestly, if you're taking this long and you're still experimenting with the Cody Ford playing that role and it's a competition between him and Brian Winters, it's really not a good sign. And so also what didn't help Winters' case was the fact that legitimately that first scrimmage or even the first practice I think that was held in Bill's stadium, uh, he absolutely got bulldozed by a rookie in AJ Epinesa. Now, don't get me wrong. Mr. Epinesa is an absolutely strong motherfucker. But at the end of the day, um, he's really not impressing the way that I suppose the front office was expecting him to. Now, an argument for him, I feel like that we wouldn't have went out there and got an established veteran to come in and help us out with the depth of of our offensive line now don't get me wrong i think we do have some talent on our offensive line but that next level below not so much so like those depth actors so i mean that's why i think that winters is going to remain on the 53 but i suppose i'm just gonna have to wait for the dom mafia to litter my comment section and tell me your thoughts yeah don mafia um i'm sure you've noticed that i have been putting out a lot of videos regarding our 53-man roster. I'm not going to put out a video of me predicting it. However, I am going to be recording a podcast. Me and Aaron Williams, we are recording that tonight. Say that you're watching this video at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's exactly what I'm doing. Me and Aaron are going to be diving down and dissecting who is going to make this 53-man roster, and then we will make it happen. So say that you haven't subscribed to Believe in Bills, I'm going to put those links in the description, Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever the hell you listen to podcasts. Go subscribe to it. It should be dropping either super late tonight or really, really early tomorrow morning. Thank you again for your continued support. Ladies and gentlemen, before I let you go, I need to remind you one more thing. Smash the fuck out of that like button for your boy. I love giving you guys Bill's content. And if you can just click that little button for me real fast, we'll call it even, baby. But yeah, Don Mafia, thank you again for tuning in to yet another edition of the Don Mafia Report. And before I let you go, always remember, let's go Buffalo.